Hello Ice and Fire Nerds, this is Chris, and this is going to continue our Game of Thrones foreshadowing series. We'll pick up right where we left off in the last episode, and we are on Season 1, Episode 4, Cripples, Bastards, and Broken Things. Alright, we're going to jump right back in where we left off, and in our next scene we have Sam and John having a conversation on the top of the wall. I don't like high places. So Sam says here he doesn't like high places, and admittedly this may be a bit of a stretch, but he seems to like this high place. Now of course in the context of the scene, he doesn't like being near the edge of the wall. Hell, I wouldn't be either that high up with all that damn wind. But the point being that he does get sent to Old Town to this high tower, and he seems to really love it there in that damn library. And then of course we cut to a scene where we have Littlefinger and Ned taking a stroll through the garden. But Baelish, perhaps I was wrong to distrust you. Distrusting me was the wisest thing you've done since you climbed off your horse. So Littlefinger tells Ned straight up, distrusting me was the smartest thing you did since you climbed off your horse, and of course, Ned ended up trusting him, and that led to this. I did warn you not to trust me. And in our next scene, Ned's right-hand man walks up to Sir Hugh of the Vale. Nine, Sir Hugh? Third. One. Sir Hugh! As you can see, I'm busy. I'm here on behalf of Lord Eddard Stark. The hand of the king. So we see Sir Hugh is going to participate in the list, and of course Littlefinger had already told Ned that he was John Aaron's squire, and then all of a sudden he was a knight out of the blue after John Aaron's death, so it was just kind of odd that Sir Hugh here was being such an ass in the very place that this happens. And in our next scene, we have Ned going down to see Gendry for the first time. Look at me. Now what's cool here is right before Ned leaves, he tells Mott this. If the day ever comes when that boy would rather wield a sword than forge one, you send him to me. So he says that if there ever comes a day where he'd rather wield a sword than make the sword, send him to me. Now, there's not really a payoff here, obviously, because Ned ends up dead in episode 9. Ned never sees Gendry again, for that matter. And you could throw in a few scenes here and there after Gendry gets out of King's Landing and escapes with Arya with him wielding a sword and all that type of thing. But I don't think this is quite paid off yet. And by the Season 7 filming news, I won't say anything here for spoilers' sake. But if you're interested in those videos, be sure to check them out in the Game of Thrones playlist. I think we will see this payoff in Season 7. And I think Gendry has decided he would rather wield the sword than make the sword. And it may not actually be a sword. And I think what's really important here is it shows Ned has a soft spot for bastards. This going back to the secret he knows about his own nephew, Jon Snow, since he had just discovered that this was Robert's bastard and Robert doesn't even know about him. All right, in our next scene here, we have Jamie and Rory having a little discussion, and this scene is full of goodies. Makes me listen as he insults my sister. <laughs> Forgive me, my lord. So this is a really cool scene regardless. We have Jamie kind of being an asshole here, but they also kind of bond just a little bit at least over the fact that they did fight together at the Greyjoy Rebellion. So they're talking about this battle and Rory says this. One of the Greyjoys nearly took my eye. Vicious sons of whores. They like the bloodshed. So he says one of the Greyjoys nearly took out his eye. And later on we see, unfortunately, this. And we also have a little bit more talk about Theon here when they're going over this Greyjoy battle, they remember, when Jory says this. I saw the youngest of the Greyjoy lads at Winterfell. It's like seeing a shark on a mountaintop. Theon, he's a good lad. I doubt it. So Jamie says here, I doubt it, and he was damn right because later on we see this. Jamie, and you will wish you hadn't. Maester Lewin, send a raven to Pike informing my father of my victory here. So episode four was definitely packed full of hints about Theon and what was going to happen with him and his character. And then of course we head back up to the wall where John wants to protect Sam. Sam's no different from the rest of us. There's no place for him in the world, so he's come here. 
You're not gonna hurt him in the training yard anymore. Never again, no matter what Thorne says. So we see here that Rass is the one who doesn't agree with John's assessment of the situation. So of course we see the following. No one touches Sam. So they give Rast here a medieval blanket party and we see Ghost right up in his face, you know, growling and snarling. And of course, there's already been many hints that Rast was going to be a problem in the future, as I mentioned in previous episodes. But of course, the payoff for this scene directly would be this. And of course, John wanting to protect Sam instead of making him tougher and actually teaching him how to fight and making him learn to fight, we hear Alistair Thorne say this. You think this is funny, do you? When you're out there, beyond the wall with the sun going down, do you want a man at your back or a sniveling boy? And Alistair's absolutely right here because later on we see this. Three blasts. So the White Walkers come for the first time to the Fist of the First Men, and of course they run like Kale and leave Sam behind, because honestly, Thorne was right. He should at least been in better shape to be able to get the hell up out of there. All right, and finally we have a scene here between Viserys and Danny, where Viserys thinks he's still in control. Talk back to me. <laughs> you are a horse lord slut, and now you've woken the dragon. I am Achilles of the Dothraki. I am the wife of the great Carl, and I carry his son inside me. The next time you raise a hand to me will be the last time you have hands. So we see Danny get hit by Viserys here, and then Danny hits him back, and he's basically shot because she had never done anything like that before. She's always been very shy around him, very subdued, and very scared of him because she didn't want to wake the damn dragon. The importance of this scene here was that this is where the roles were actually reversed and this is where we actually saw the waking of the dragon and it's not Viserys, it's Danny. This scene continues the theme that was being built up during the first three episodes and this is actually the point where they kind of switch places and she discovers that she is actually the last dragon and her brother ain't shit. And of course in part four we'll continue this conversation about her being the last dragon as she has a conversation with Jorah later on. So anyway guys that'll wrap it up for this episode. So let me know what you think in the comments below, how you digging this series and let me know what I've missed. So anyway guys, as usual, thank you for all the support, especially to you guys on Patreon. A huge shout out to my executive Patreon smokescreen producers, Paul Griffin, Volga10, Lala Gig, and Kisa Powell. Thank you so much, you guys. Really, really appreciate it. Be sure to subscribe to Get Everything and make sure you click that notification bell to be notified when I drop new videos. So anyway guys, thanks so much. Really, really appreciate it. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.